And we're on. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Christian Ballard, Ballard Sports Media, coming at you with a player interview today, looking at Bethune Cookman basketball, Joe French. Joe, how you doing today? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing good. I appreciate you doing this. Uh, you know, my grandmother, it, it, it's funny, I guess she's friends with your father. Um, and she says, see, you got connections. So here I am talking to a upcoming NBA prospect, a college player. And uh, I mean, I think it's a big opportunity for me, but enough about that, man. Let's dive into some basketball. Can, I, I am curious, you know, Obviously, athletes want to pursue sports. Why basketball? Why basketball? So I played a bunch of sports uh, coming up as a kid, and I just had the most fun playing basketball. And I was also better at it than all the other sports. I played soccer, uh, football, but I just liked basketball. I had the most fun playing, and I was just – I was always pretty good. Was there anybody out there that you watched growing up in basketball maybe – Kobe, or maybe even today's guys like LeBron that you try to model your game after that maybe had an influence on like yeah. going forward with the sport. Yeah, for sure. So my first favorite player was Derrick Rose when he was oh. he had his MVP season. Um, that that was who I watched a lot. And then once I started getting a little older, um, I took a lot of stuff from Steph Curry's game. Um, I feel like me and him have a lot of similar traits on the court, so I just watched him and stuff. And obviously, he helped me. He helped transition the game and make make way for guys like me to come along behind him. That's awesome. Uh, you know, I've I've watched a lot of great great players. I mean, I I kind of look after guys like today. Like you have the upcoming stars in Kawhi, and um, you have Steph, Clay. All those guys. So that's pretty cool. Uh, obviously, from what I understand, you know, we're, we're coming, we're, we're kind of getting through this whole pandemic thing. But I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, but COVID did shut down a lot. And it, I, I believe it did um, affect your basketball career from what I've heard. Yes. Yeah, it did. Um, so my, So I played my freshman year. And then we were at our conference tournament, and we actually got sent home right before our game. That's when they shut down all the tournaments and everything. So then going into the next season, fall 2020, uh, my school, right before our first practice, they decided to shut down sports. So all sports, even spring sports, fall sports, everybody was shut down. Everybody went home for the rest of the fall semester. So it really it really took a toll on me. I ended up entering a transfer portal. I went to another school. Um, in South Florida, um, and I ended up not even being able to play my sophomore year because uh, because of COVID, honestly. And then they didn't end up giving me a waiver, even though my school um, had canceled sports, and they said I couldn't get a waiver to play because I had transferred uh, after the school year started. So I was considered a mid-year transfer, which is prohibited by the NCAA. So, so you had to like you had to basically what they would call in football red shirt, right? You had yeah. to sit down until the next season. Yeah, exactly. So I'm I'm at all the practice. I'm in practice every day, getting better in weights, all that. Only thing I wasn't doing is suiting up and playing in games. Um, so then that kind of took away my sophomore year, which ended up being this year. Um, so I could sit here and be mad about it, but I just controlled what I could and and you know just stayed locked in and stayed trying to get better, um, stay focused on what I could control and just try to look at the positive side of things. Yeah, and I think you mentioned a little bit about being at FAU. So talk to me about your college decisions. You know, when you went, you, you started out, it looked like, um, from what I read, you were at Bethune-Cookman first, then you went to FAU, and now you're back at Bethune-Cookman. Uh Correct me on that if I am wrong, but talk to me about your college journey and the decisions of where you've ended up and transferring and, and, and just going to school. Yeah, so coming out of high school, um, coming into college, I should say, um, Bethune, was, Bethune is an hour from my house in Orlando. Uh, my family could come watch me play, and they were also the school um, that showed the most interest in me. 
and they recruited me the hardest. So I felt like I would rather go where I was really wanted, not, you know what I mean? Where I was really needed rather than what, where I was wanted. And then, so when I transferred, it was just, it was just a decision pretty much that I was forced to make because um, for my career in the place I was trying to go, I didn't think it would be conducive to my personal development if I'm sitting at home while every other basketball player has a season. So even if I wasn't able to play, I was still in practice. I was still getting better. And I still actually had a productive year in the year that I sat out. So I wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't change the fact that I transferred because I, I still benefited from it in some aspects. And the reason I came back was just, just, right here. you know, because he's not just, just, a just because of the opportunity I had at Bethune, I felt like I had, you know, good chemistry with the players. Um, I felt like being closer to home, my family would come to me play more. Um, and I felt like I had a better opportunity to make some noise and, and, and kind of show the world who I am and what I could do. Yeah, man, absolutely. So, uh, you know, just you mentioned your family seeing you play. Who has been the biggest, you know, factor in, you know, like, what, like, what's the biggest inspiration or who keeps you going uh, when the going gets tough in basketball? Because obviously we all have our downfalls, but there's always got to be a big supporting cast to keep us going, right? Yeah, I can't complain. I have a pretty good supporting cast. I say I have a great supporting cast. Um, uh, two people that play a main role, and that's my dad, which you might be a little familiar with, mm -hmm. and uh, my trainer, uh, Coach Mark. He played a little bit in the league for the Magic. Um, and you know, they both have been with me since the start of my journey. Um, and they both have believed in me in times where I may have doubted myself. Uh, and they both always kept me motivated. My dad put the ball in my hands. My dad provided me, um, with the resources to be able to train and to be able to, you know, get better and introducing me to certain people. Um, uh, and coach Mark has been very beneficial to me on the fact that he, is looking at the big picture things. He saw the end product of what I came out to be. He saw that when I was just a little kid. So I'm grateful for him for seeing that he has a great eye for the game. And then my dad just, he, he knows my game pretty well as also. So those two I'm really dependent on in all my basketball decisions. That's awesome, man. So talk to me. I mean, we all have our everyday lives. Uh, what would you say is what, like, you get up in the morning and basketball is more than just putting on the Jersey and going out playing games. What would you say a day in the life for you as a basketball player is, especially obviously being in school too and having classes? Yeah. So during the, in the summer is a little bit different. The summer is all basketball, but during the school, during the school year, I'm pretty much booked up all day. Uh, I usually get up probably around seven or eight and I usually start the day with weights um, with my with my trainer at the school, uh, I will go through a little weight workout, and then um, then after that I'll usually shoot, put up some shots. Uh, nothing too hard on the body, just a lot of a lot of threes, a lot of catch and shoots. Um, and then I'll have class after that. Um, and obviously I'm eating. I'm eating uh before class. Then class over, I'm probably chilling for a little bit, eating. Then I'm going to the gym probably around one thirty. Um, I'm either putting in work with either my trainer or I'm putting in work if I'm with my coaches at the school or maybe with a teammate. Um, and then after that, uh, chill, hang out, eat, and then depending on how my leg's tired or not, I'll come back to the gym at night, put up some shots. Um, but it's, I'm always working on my game. I'm always trying to get better. I'm always trying to attack the different weaknesses I have in my game. Um so it's really never it's never stopping it's all i think about it's all i'm worried about doing so it's pretty much a lifestyle you got to be committed to it yeah man i think you got to definitely be committed to anything you want to pursue or whatever dreams that you have and it seems like you obviously are quite uh committed to basketball for sure man that's awesome so yeah i understand too so and again, correct me, you entered the the 2022 NBA draft, but then you decided to pull your name out and come back. Yeah. Why 
Honestly, is it about a prospect that makes him have a second thought and wants to come back to play more basketball in college instead of just going pro right away? Yeah. yeah. So I came out and I declared it, and I and I was with an agent with the option to come back because um, I feel like I have a lot more to accomplish in my college career. Um, and I and I feel like it was somewhat of a gamble with me being uh, of my classification being pretty early. I've only played two seasons, um, so I felt like it was an opportunity for me to come out into the draft. And it was more about showcasing than anything for me. It was more about getting my name across to all the NBA teams, um, getting everybody familiar with me, and seeing what they think of me, and then collecting feedback from those teams. So a lot of teams said that they would like to see me get stronger. A lot of teams said that they would like to see me um, improve some other parts of my game other than scoring, like rebounding, defending, and 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 passing a little bit. Um, so the decision to come back, it was it wasn't so much of me backing out because I have a lot left. You know what I mean? I still have a lot left to accomplish in my in my college career, and and all in all, I still would like to enjoy being a college kid for one more year and there has been some some opportunities you know what i mean some two way some 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 different opportunities that may be apart from getting drafted for me to play pro um because you know getting drafted is not the only way the way into the league so um i just felt like all those opportunities would still be there um if i was to come back one more year the only thing that it could do is help me uh if, if i keep improving you get me so if I have if I have another two years, I might as well use one more and see what I got, um, and keep improving my stock and see if I can get you know what I mean. Keep improving my draft stock, keep improving my you know what I mean. My overall, get my name out to, to all these teams, and so I feel like that's why it was the best decision. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't want to butcher his name, but Reggie. How, how do you say the head coach Reggie Theos? Reggie Theus. Yeah, so talk to me about the influence uh, that he's had on you since you've been at Bethune Cookman. Yeah, so Reggie Theus is a very accomplished player. He's been to every level that I desire to go to. He's been through it, through it all over again. He had a great college career. He had a great pro career. Um, and his wealth of connections and his wealth of experience has been beneficial. Um just 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 on the fact of him being through it as a player um and it doesn't even have so much to do with his coaching but just him him being able to help me navigate certain situations you know as a player trying to make it uh he did it so obviously he he did something right when he was playing so it can't hurt to 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 soak in advice from him and 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 you know kind of kind of see his perspective on things because like I said at the end of the day he did it all himself and nobody could take that from him so it's been very beneficial to have him you know in my corner yeah that's awesome man that's really awesome so uh I don't think I asked this one yet but I am curious like what what was it that drew you to Bethune Cookman uh, when you did uh, transfer over? Yeah. So when I transferred back, um, I was really close with the coaches before I left. Um, and they kind of set the framework for me to come back. They kind of recruited the right pieces, um, the right pieces around me and the right teammates. And I'm very happy with what they did on the recruiting side. And, and they just presented the opportunity, like, wouldn't you like to come back home and, and really put on for for your city, for your family. Have it, have them at every game. Doing it from an HBCU is something special. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because not a lot of HBCU kids and teams really get respected like that. So I felt like I had a great opportunity to kind of be a catalyst for you know a new wave. Um, and it's a lot more talent in HBCUs than people think. I'm not really sure why they get discredited, but um, I kind of took it with a chip on my shoulder to kind of want to be able to do it as an underdog. And I've kind of been an underdog for a while. So it was, it was a, it was an opportunity that I just didn't want to pass up on. Um, and then fast forward a little bit in July, my coaches actually ended up taking other jobs. So the coaches that brought me back, 
One of them went to New Mexico State and went to March Madness. Another one of them went to Texas A&M Corpus Christi. They went to March Madness. And then another one went to UT Martin and took a head coaching job there. And then that's when Coach Diaz came in, which, you know what I mean, it worked out. It was convenient. And I felt like even with Coach Diaz coming in, it's like, you know, you got now, you want to go to the NBA. Now you got a guy that's played 15 years in the NBA coming to coach you. So it was, I saw it as a great opportunity. That's awesome. Um, you mentioned, you, you mentioned something about being an underdog, you know, what's that like? Because obviously I, I'm sure, um, and I hope you don't like take it personal, but probably not everybody knows exactly who Joe French is. Yeah. So when you have like, like an underdog mentality, not that people think you're bad, but when you want to be that star as a player, I think, everybody wants to how do you handle that how do you you know work hard at that and and try to build your name up build your brand and get to that next level yeah yeah so i think one of the reasons people have kind of overlooked me throughout my life in the past was because i was a little bit smaller than everybody okay um so i think now i don't think that i'm too much of an underdog unless we're talking nba circles um, and then I'll have some stuff to prove. And that's just because of me coming out of a, like, it's not like I'm coming out of UCLA or Kansas. You know what I mean? I'm coming out of a lower level school. So people are kind of like looking to see what I got. Um, whether if I'm doing this coming out of one of those other schools, it's like, okay, well, here's where he comes from. You feel me? So it's like, I kind of take it a chip on my shoulder to kind of like make everybody know everywhere I go. I want everybody to know that. I, I I got like don't look at me like I'm something that's not as good just because of where I come from. So yeah. it's kind of been really motivational for me to kind of and I enjoy doing it. I enjoy you know being questioned. I enjoy like people looking at me like let's see what he got because I love proving people wrong. So every chance I get to let people know who I am, I always take my my full advantage of it. <laughs> hey, you and me both, man. Um, yeah. I really, really don't have much questions, uh, but I guess the final question I have, unless something comes up, you know, obviously you withdraw from the draft, you come back. What's next for Joe French in 2022 uh, going forward? Obviously, I guess practice and then the upcoming season after this season, is that time for the NBA draft? Yes, sir. If I had to put, if I had to put my all of my eggs in one basket, I would do it. I'll take the gamble, and I think um, the work I put in is going to show for itself. Uh, I think I have all the experience necessary. I think this year it's time for me to show the world really who I am. I did it this year, this past season. I think this year it's time for me to to stamp that and solidify it, and make sure every team. Now I got the attention of all these teams watching, so. I'm gonna have all, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna be in the perfect position to put my to put myself in position to you know play in the NBA in the years to come. So I'm looking forward to doing everything I got to do in this next year to make that happen. I'll say this, and uh, I think this applies to everybody when I say all eyes on Joe French in 2022. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I definitely uh, I, I did want to ask about your dad because. How I came across you apparently was that I guess my grandmother is friends with, with him. Just talk about lastly the impact that he's had on you playing basketball. Yeah, so he's kind of always been there for me, um, basketball wise and life wise. Um, and and he knows my game very well. When I'm missing shots, he can tell what's wrong with my shot. Um, and me and him have a very strong relationship, so he's always been supporting me. In anything I decided to do, whether if it's been, whether if it was basketball or uh, chess club or something, I know he would be in my corner trying to push me to be the best I could be. Um, so I'm just eternally grateful for him. I'm um, thankful to have somebody like him in my life. Um, and it's just quite honestly, a lot of people don't aren't as lucky to get that kind of support and that kind of love from you know their inner circle. So it's been a blessing. That's awesome. Joe, thank you so much for doing this with me today, and good luck going no forward in your basketball career. Man, I appreciate you having me anytime. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Joe my God.